All right, up next, we've got our next session, which is a panel. And this panel is going to be led by Emmett Childress. So I'm gonna turn it over to him in a moment. But just quick uh, introduction, Emmett is a, a business owner, security architect. And after talking to Emmett, it was clear that he had a passion. He has a passion for cybersecurity and technology, but I think even more so a passion for connecting people. And so that's why he's leading this panel of experts that you're gonna hear from next. Emmett, turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to first start off by, I'm sorry, thank you, Frank. Uh, I'd like to first start off by thanking everyone for taking some time out of their day uh, to listen to us talk about some very uh, important topics, uh, specifically as they relate to cloud security. Uh, we want to make everyone feel welcome. We have a Slack channel where you can go and ask questions. So if you feel there's something uh, that isn't being covered during the course of the discussion, please go out there and ask. Uh, we will um, start out by uh, just introducing uh, the panelists. We have uh, Sierra Jernigan, uh, Christina Murillo, Timmy Reed, and Dominique West. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm someone who's a professional and I've been entrenched in uh, this cloud security, well, I've just been entrenched in IT and this is hypothetical, right? So I'd like to ask the panel, if my grandmother is listening to us and she could be, what would you tell her or me, myself, as someone who's a IT professional and new to this, this whole security concept? We've, we've got an audit that's coming up and I'm not in compliance. How do you how do you introduce someone to the concept of cloud security? I think I would tell her to watch uh, MK's presentation because he perfectly summarized everything about cloud security. <laughs> so I would say, hey, this hey, grandma, I'm going to give you a link. Actually, let me come over and let me uh, let's watch it together. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think, I mean, he, he did a, I'm still kind of like in, not in awe, but just like, wow, he did such a great job of summarizing because I think it's one of these things where there's so much complexity wrapped around, you know, cloud security and, and obviously um, everyone is going to have a different perspective on it. But um, I think your question was about an audit, right? Right. So like my grandmother's, you know, just say my grandma, not me, like I, you know, I've been through audits, you've been through audits. So she listened to that presentation and she's like, well, yeah, it's complex, but make it really simple for me. Give me one thing uh, that I can take away from that conversation or three things, right? That I can say, okay, hey, I don't know anything about it, but I heard some about it. And the gentleman sounded like he knew what he's talking about. Uh, me personally, I, so I, I give it a different view because uh, my mom is probably the best example of this. Okay. Uh, and I think everybody probably could relate to this insider threat. We all have family members that your your parents or your or your just members of the family you just don't trust, right? You know. So uh, from that perspective, that's how I would break it down. Like, hey, we're having this audit, but here are the things that we are looking for. We're looking for this insider threat, which could be a family member. And in some cases have been, right? When you're talking about in a company. Um, the other perspective um, that I would also bring up, it, and everybody has this grandmother or mother or someone in their, in their family that's always watching, right? So I would present the information to like, you have to be aware because um, my mom is very keen on like, hey, are the cameras up in the front, in the back, are the lights on? breaking it down to to that from that aspect for cybersecurity and an audit is how I would present that information to my mom or my grandmother. I think for me, <clears throat> excuse me, for my grandmother who is not very keen on technology and all the terminology, so she likes things in very simple terms. Uh, how I would describe it to her would basically be, you know, we're trying to protect data and assets you know, that are in the cloud, right? Very simple, it's, it's a very simple definition that you can give people because people understand what data is, right? We know there's data everywhere. We know 
they have um, information that their name, their phone number, their social security number, that's data, right? That's things that they would like to keep protected. My grandmother knows the concept of keeping like passwords, I mean, excuse me, passwords protected, of keeping like her social security cards protected, right? So it's the same, I, I try to break it down and relate it into terms that she can understand and relate to because we tend to, uh, in the field, have very complex terminology. We like to throw acronyms and synonyms everywhere. So for her, you know, breaking it down for people who are trying to figure out, well, what is cloud security? Well, how can I understand this amazing presentation that just happened, but how can I relate it in a way that I can maybe relay it to someone else, right? Because that's how you know that you truly understood something is if you can relate it to someone else is, hey, I'm trying to protect my assets, things that I find uh, precious that happen to reside, you know, in the cloud. Okay, uh, is anyone else that would uh, like to add in to that? Okay, all right, so let's say, all right, I, I, I kind of crossed dreams when I said uh, my grandmother and IT professionals, say I've been on-prem, right? Uh, I've been in data centers, I understand, you know, what it means to, to reach out and touch my hardware. Now, me and my grandmother, because she's like, wants to know what her baby's doing. Could you explain to me what cloud is, i.e. distributed computing? Or us? So I'll take a stab at a, a good way to, to define uh, cloud, because I think uh, oftentimes this gets uh, looked over um, it's, it's, it's still computers in, inside the data center, um, inside of a rack uh, with power, cooling, air. Um, and uh, basically, um, you can say a platform. I don't want to get into the OS because that may be a little confusing for, for some. But um, to, as, and the saying goes, it's still someone else's computer. There's still cybersecurity underneath that needs to be uh, taken care of in terms of um, who has the physical access to the computer, who has uh, the right to log into that computer, um, and even at the OS level, um, what uh, packages or applications are on that computer, um, and still present it out to someone where they don't have to have physical access to the data center in order to access their servers or their applications in the simplest format. Okay, um, Dominique? I always like to uh, explain the cloud by comparing like what traditionally we, we've kind of done security. So mm -hmm. essentially in a traditional setting with security, you have to what? Buy your, your data center, you have to um, you know, buy your hardware, buy your software, you're in charge of everything, right? This is essentially your baby. You're the one who's taking care of every aspect. And when you are now migrating or using cloud services, you're now entrusting someone else is the person who's in charge of the buying a data center, maintaining that data center, and you're just using their services. Now, to what level you're using their services, that just depends on, you know, how much involvement that you would like to be. But for the most part, like when you have cloud and you compare it to traditional models, it's it's really the same thing. The only difference is what level of commitment, um, what level of uh, involvement you have, um, but it's just essentially using someone else's data center, someone else's hardware, someone else's software um, to do to do your everyday job. Okay, Christina. I mean, I think both Tamika and Dominique gave wonderful uh, explanations. Uh, for me, my family is super non-technical, so I like to use a lot of analogies on the fly, depending on the situation. But usually what I, you know, what I try to compare it to is kind of like a pay per use thing, right? So for example, before I had a car, you know, my mom and I, if she needed a ride, I would like go get a zip car, right? I didn't have a car payment. I didn't have an insurance payment. But when I needed a car, right, I would go to Zipcar, use their services, 
put the car back in the parking lot, right? And then go about my business. So I try to use those type of analogies and then build on it, right? So I, I talk about um, if the, you know there, there's a company and I talk about what Dominique and uh, Tamika mentioned that, you know, instead of me having uh, racks and racks in, in a, I don't know, renting a storage space or renting an office and having racks, racks and racks, I'm going to use someone else's services and I'm going to pay based on what I use. So I try to simplify it again. It really depends. It's one of those, it depends, right? It depends on uh, the level of familiarity somebody has with technology, if they're comfortable speaking about it, what terms I can use, if they're 100% not comfortable. So if it is my grandmother who doesn't really care about the cloud, to be honest with you, uh, I try to uh, use these analogies to make it a little bit more um, accessible. Excellent. Okay, so now that we have somewhat of a baseline of what it is, how do we secure it? So let's, uh, Dominique, Tamika, Christina, that's the order you're showing up in Zoom, so I'm not picking on anyone. Um, I think Jason wanted to contribute. Uh, okay, well, I just, j please jump in there, Jason. I'm sorry, I don't see you, so I, I apologize. Please get in there, Jason. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay, try now. Can you hear me? All right, we hear you now. Hey, man, you, you were worrying right. me, man. I was like, okay, I know he's got some good stuff. Everyone, Jason LeBlanc. So all I was going to say is the concept of cloud is a very blurry thing now. So you have on-premise, basically virtualization, and you have paying someone for <clears throat> where it's whether it's storage, compute, network, all of these things, it's very, it's a very muddled thing. So sometimes it's on-premises virtualization that blurs into another service provider's thing. And the way you look at security has to be very holistic, so that you look at all of it the exact same way. So whatever solutions you're you're trying to use to have visibility in your environment and secure it, it doesn't matter whether it's on-prem, off-prem, whose prem doesn't matter. So the tools that you need should work in all of those various factors because most of the time it's very hybrid. It's not fully your, everything's in the cloud. Sometimes you're a little bit, some things are in the cloud, some things are not. Okay, so uh, I like that wrinkle. So we'll pick that up with the on-prem in the cloud, i.e. distributed computing. Uh, Dominique, Tamika, Christina, Jason, in that order, how do I secure it? You know, we got all these terms around like modern and, and, and we kind of established a baseline for what it is. How would I go about securing that? How would one go about securing it, right? I'm a developer by trade. I'm gonna do bad, nasty things. So you folks are gonna help you know, get someone like me or someone in my uh, profession to say, hey, look, you guys need to think about security. This is what we're gonna do and this is why we're gonna do it. Dominique. Right, so security can be pretty complex when you say, well, how do I secure the cloud? Because there's so many components in the cloud. So the real question I would have there is, well, what are you trying to secure, right? So it, what kind of services do you have? Are you looking to improve um, security for your users, right? Because then we would point you in the direction of IAM. Are you trying to make sure that none of your sensitive documents are, you know, leaving your environment without your knowledge, right? Or that sensitive um, documents are open to the public, right? Because then I would point you in data loss prevention, figuring out how do you um, identify sensitive documentation in the first place. So when someone who's new trying to understand, well, how do I secure the cloud? Because the cloud can be so complex because there's so many components. I would first just focus on like, I think Jason put it perfectly, right? You have to be more holistic. You have to break down the different aspects um, that are within security or in cloud in the first place. So once you break that down, I think it becomes a little bit easier to figure out, well, how to secure something. So I would recommend people to learn um, the different main services, right? Learn about IAM, learn about um, security monitoring operations tools, like learn all those things and then figure out, okay, well, now that I have these basic concepts, how would I secure something? Now that I know <clears throat> how it works, you know, how can I go about and secure it? Because saying securing the cloud can be pretty overwhelming for <laughs> any security professional who's trying to figure out like, how do I get a handle on my environment? 
Yep, and to piggyback off of MK and um, Jason and Dominique, uh, one of the big things that was mentioned, and it's a it's a it's a constant theme, is shifting left, right? So what does that actually mean? Is meaning pulling security from being an afterthought to being a forethought, forethought. And the other uh, situation with that is understanding automation and then policy as code, um, being able to take your policies um, that you normally are maybe handwritten processes, procedures, um, a lot of paperwork behind that and moving that into what we call policy is code and automating that. Um, so those components that Dominique talked about are, are still things that are, are concepts that you need, but you also need to be able to, whatever you articulate, you should be able to automate, right? Whatever you're going to say that you're going to do, you're going to articulate it, you need to automate it. So that way you have that, what we call a security posture and have that written down as code so you can always have a reference of version controlling that. Uh, being able to move through and say, okay, well, this IAM, IAM policy that I created is version controlled. Who last updated it? What, why it was last updated? How was it last updated? Uh, where is it stored at? So throughout your, your cloud, whether you're on-prem, whether you're uh, in somebody's public cloud or in if, or even if you're in um, multiple clouds, um, you still have to have a security posture that, that is automated, that is version control that you can see throughout whatever policy or whatever you're going to drive. So I think when you say like securing the cloud, I think that's way too broad uh, to Dominique's point. I think it's important to understand if first, if you even have a baseline, like understand your, understand the environment you're walking into, right? You cannot secure what you do not understand. Um, and what I do notice is I'm going to take it away from giving like generic, you know, managing access control and like, you know, data retention and encryption, like th that's, generic great right? what i'm what i really want to focus on is that you cannot you cannot protect or minimize risk in silo right you are not superman and you cannot do it on your own so it is going to take uh you know what mk spoke about earlier like that strategic thinking and it's going to take more of more connections throughout the organization, right? Because if the security team is working in isolation and the developers are doing whatever they do, um, it's not going to work, right? If they're, you know, I don't know, if you're, if you're, if they're adding, you know, keys and certificates in plain sight and, and passwords in plain text in GitHub, then what are we doing here, right? So I think there needs to be a broader conversation and everybody has to have that baseline understanding. First, understand what you're protecting. But second, people have to be aligned, right? Like there's no, you're not going to move forward if there's no strategic alignment, um, which is the reason why we continue to, to run into these problems, right? Vis-a-vis -vis tech debt. Um, and then also uh, companies getting hacked, right, for lack of a better term, because there is no strategic alignment. Everyone is in their bubble. They're doing whatever they want to do. Um, they're not speaking. They're not communicating. And everybody's not on the same page when it comes to what are we protecting, how we're protecting it, and what do we have to do to maintain that? Jason. Well, I think the first thing that I do anytime I walk into an organization, and typically I come in as a consultant, they're asking me for advice, and the first thing I set up is visibility. I want to be able to see what's going on at every level of the network from layer one to layer seven. And the different tools you use, those can be various different things, but you need to have visibility before you can put controls on something. You need to understand where things are moving. So information's moving around. You want to have visibility into that, and you definitely want tools that will pick out things that are, you know, more risky and bring them to your attention. So good sims, things like that, that will say, hey, I have a problem over here. I see something that looks insecure, and it brings it to your attention. And you fine-tune and whittle that stuff down to where it's really the threats that you're looking for. And then how you handle that is a completely different thing, and every organization does it different. Some are better at it than others. But I agree, you need to have... It's a cohesive thing. Holistic is the word I'm going to use again. 
you have to have everybody first and foremost in their mind. Security has to be first. And a lot of times when people are, you know, developers, network guys, whatever you may be, they want something that's fast. They want something that's convenient. And then there's also the other piece of the triangle is security. And the one piece of that triangle you can't take off is security in this day and age. And I was just having this conversation yesterday. So it's a very real world thing. So security always has to be there. If you sacrifice speed and convenience, then unfortunately that's what you have to sacrifice. Okay. Well, my grandmother likes, she's picking up what you're putting down. Okay. It's, it's making sense. She's wanting to put something on it. So she's saying, Hey, look, which one of these distributed computing providers should we go with? Right. So if you could just compare contrast, what are the, pros and cons, or maybe which profile would fit best with a given provider. And let's just keep it simple. Uh, we've got in no particular order, uh, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, and Azure. Dominique. Well, I think similar to uh, any major, um, maybe vendor that you're about to introduce to your life, it would depend on your use case, right? So you can't just say, well, you know, AWS has been around for the longest. So, you know, maybe they have the better expertise. I should go with them because that might not fit your, your business use case, right? Um, I think you would need to first understand, and this comes with vendor management, no matter who you're going with, cloud service provider or whoever, um, really understanding how that provider services is meeting your needs, right? And, and not just your needs at the moment. Um, I think it really, you need to have a futuristic look on where you're trying to go. Like, what's your reasoning? What's the reason that you're even, you know, moving to the cloud in the first place, right? Everyone's moving because they're trying to be agile, right? They're trying to save business costs. They're trying to X, Y, Z. Past that, you know, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to um, do in the next couple of years, couple of months, you know, um, X, Y, Z. So first and foremost, I know everyone, you know, knows about AWS because they have been around the longest. They have the, the uh, most services at the moment. Um, so, you know, naturally uh, a lot of people when they're trying to get started gravitate towards maybe studying or going with that with organizations. Um, personally, I think you just need to figure out, align your business use case, your bottom line with whatever cloud service provider, make sure and understand where they're going with their services. So that way you understand, well, how can you um, still control your things? Like how can you still secure your data? How can you uh, make sure you're leveraging and building the type of architect, you know, architect the type of environment that you need? Um, and I think from there, you'll be able to find your answer. It's no really easy way to just say, hey, let me just compare and contrast. It's really just always aligning with your business use case. Yeah, and to add to that, um, it's, it's also your business use case, but it's also who's on deck. And when I say who's on deck is, what does your team know um, in terms of how much training you're gonna have to provide or get caught up on um is it just a one cloud strategy is it a multi-cloud strategy is it an on-prem cloud strategy and a multi-cloud strategy so there are some other factors that go into that when you're saying hey who's the best is again comes down to just like she said what what services are going to go where can they can these services live in this cloud should they be on-prem should they should 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 they not go uh, to the cloud at all? Um, so those are other things to uh, always consider: is um, who what what is your staff that you have on hand? Can they handle this migration, or can they do they understand the concepts of cloud and how much training is that going to also uh, come into play as you're as you're trying to make this journey? that's super important and a lot of organizations uh, tend to look outside versus uh, train internally. So now you have that, uh, again, a culture divide there as well too, uh, which is another security threat if you wanna look at it that way. Cause again, we're talking insider threat, someone's coming in, you know, that's the sabotage. So the list goes on, but I, I brought that up because it happens more often than people really actually think. 
yeah another thing on top of the use cases is also like pricing right so like you know con from a contractual obligation like what is going to get your company the most ROI? What is the biggest bang for the buck? Are you going to have to spend additional money on, you know, training your um, your ICs, right? And then another thing, I think that there's this misconception that oh, if you've been working in on-prem, you know, in on-premises for like the past 25 years, that you're just automatically going to know your, the cloud in your sleep, right? Well, that's not the case, right? There is a there is a like some kind of ramp up time and some learning there, right? It's a, the terminology is different, the implementation is different. Yes, it can be learned, but there's also that um, there's also a little bit of a gap there. So uh, to Tamika's point, it may be that you may need to invest in training your your folks, or it may be that you you may need a service that you know you where you can kind of offload to the um, to, to the tool or to the service provider. Uh, so it really, really depends just to kind of uh, hammer on that a little bit more, it really depends on the organization's use cases. Jason. Yes, sir. I think I think all of those points are valid. And I think the, the other piece of it is you know, I've, I've seen struggles with people that migrate to the cloud in various different forms. There's, there are certain things that don't translate well. I've seen, for example, SQL can be problematic when you're trying to make a migration happen. Um, synchronization of directory structures like AD, where you're trusting someone with a, a lot. So it's really a you need to have you need to have a very good project manager who's very technical also that can help you map all of that potential nightmarish path to get from on-prem to cloud and even when you're doing a hybrid so you want some things in the cloud and some things not to that point some things you don't want in the cloud perhaps but plotting and planning all of that out and getting everybody on board understanding the moving pieces it's it's a game of chess so having a good plan. Okay. All right. Well, so we've established, you know, identity access, what a, a strategy, or at least uh, getting an understanding of what we're trying to secure on-prem uh, that we may be moving to the cloud. So we Decided we're going to go to distributed computing. We picked out a couple of vendors uh, because we're going to keep some of it on-prem. We're going to put some of it in one vendor, some of it in the other vendor. How well, or let's get to say this, how, do, how does one get up to speed? Where does one go to find out what this distributing distributed computing world is. I don't, I don't want to say make it a career, but let's just say, you know, maybe I'm thinking about, you know, something to do with a part-time kind of thing, or maybe I'm just fresh out of college. You know, I want to know how would one go about learning what it means to be, you know, in distributed computing, uh, specifically from an architectural standpoint and more importantly for the subject, from the standpoint of this conversation, from a security standpoint, where does one go to get right? I think Tamika would be amazing at answering this question. She's always talking about it and it's like, she's the SME here. Amika, Tamika, do your thing, girl. Uh, so it's funny you said that, just had a, a meetup last night and we had 60 people on the meetup last night. Um, talking about this very same thing from cybersecurity to cloud. So I'm gonna rattle off a bunch of ideas. Uh, it's recorded, so you got it. Uh, so some, here's some concepts um, that I try to, I, I try to give you to, so it's tangible. So one of the things that, um, some of the things that I, I, I try to tell people is this, um, when you're trying to learn um, first off is you need to learn how you learn. So you need to figure out whether or not if you are a, a person that likes to read or is it audible, is it both? 
And the reason why I say that, because that's going to determine what platform you pick, whether it's a plural site, whether it's a Udemy, whether it's Audible, whether it's Safari, um, whether it's going to meetups, whether it's uh, being at a conference, being in person, in person, uh, one on one, you have to learn how you learn. So those are just want to caveat that. The other one is, um, and this sounds cruel, and cruel punishment, but literally go on to uh, the job sites, Indeed, um, LinkedIn, whatever, pick out 10 jobs, look at all 10 of those jobs and find out what's the core commonality between all those jobs. Once you find out what the core commonality is between all those jobs, use that as your baseline to guide you for training. Because you'll find that, hey, this one wants AWS, this, is, this one wants GCP, this one wants um, something on-prem, but those are concepts. So learn concepts, don't learn tools, learn concepts. Once you uh, learn concepts, you can take those concepts and apply them across the board. I don't want to take up everybody. I don't want to take up too much time. Is that okay? Can I do I need to keep going or do I need to stop? Okay. All right. Um, the other piece to this is once you have a, a, a core fundamental baseline, and people don't talk about this, mind map it out. Literally take a mind map and put down what those core pieces are. And then as you mind map it out, you can add to that mind map on where you found um, the best resource, who's in the industry that you can reach out to, who's a good person to follow on Twitter. These people are having a conference I can attend it these days. So now you have your own set of curriculum. And the other piece is don't do this by yourself. <laughs> we tend to want to go all in. And when we say we go all in, we silo ourselves and you become that person that's the go-to person for you, but then you don't have a network. So as you go across this journey, make sure you network out. That's why I mentioned Twitter. That's why I mentioned LinkedIn. That's why I mentioned learning how to, how to search. That's super huge when you're doing anything um, across any of these platforms, even in cybersecurity, knowing how to search knowing how to get uh, to the to solving the problem. And one thing, and I'll stop right here before I get on a mat rant. Um, <laughs> the last thing is whenever you walk into a, a situation, be the solution. In other words, walk in by looking at that job description or looking at the landscape of that company, being able to say, I know they're probably having these problems and you only get good at this by, by exposure. I know they're having these problems. Here's things that I know that they could probably be used to solve that. So by the time you get to the interview, you're in solution mode, you're presenting solutions. I'm not saying give them to them so you don't get hired, but I'm just saying be the solution, be that answer when you walk in. I think the only thing I, I'd add to that, and that was perfect, Tamika, see, I knew you, I knew, knew you would do it. Um, the only thing I would add to that is that, you know, document your journey because your challenges could be someone else's kind of guide, right, or um, addition to their mind map. So, like, follow Dominique. She does a fantastic job of, of documenting that, like, her, her process, her journey, and how she learns. Uh, but then also, uh, to Tamika's point, look at challenges as opportunities, right? So whenever I go into any situation and I see challenges, I could, I could say like these people are out our mess, everything is broken. I see these as, you know, opportunities to make things better, opportunities to contribute, you know, some of my knowledge experience uh, towards, um, towards it kind of defining what the solution is going to be, right? So, uh, but the one thing that I will remind everyone is that this is this industry is constant learning. No one knows it all. You're going to have to challenge yourself every single day, every single hour. Um, and there will be times where you know nothing and you will have to learn the thing. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to keep pushing. Agreed. Tamika said it perfectly. And the only thing I want to reiterate is like, 
I'm a big proponent every time I speak, it's about community. Like you are not alone on this journey to becoming, you know, an architect or a cloud security, whatever it is, job role that you're aspiring to be. There are so many people out there who are also studying, studying for that same certification that you've been trying to get to. If you're on social media or, you know, if you're on some kind of network and you're like, hey, I'm studying for this, like put it out there because I'm I promise you there'll be 20 other people underneath who'll be like, so am I, so am I, like, let's do a study group together. And I feel like community is the really best way that we can expand and improve this, this industry is like us just helping one another. Like we all have a common goal. We're trying to bring value. We're trying to help secure. We're trying to learn. We're trying to, you know, just be the best um, person that we can be out here in our career. So at that same time, you know, as you're learning, like, like Christina said, document it, put it out there. People have different voices. I know I was a person who said, well, there's already a thousand articles out there about cloud security. There's already a thousand podcasts out there. There's already a thousand XYZs, but you know what's not a thousand out there? Dominique West, right? So there's not a whole bunch of you out there. There's just a bunch of different voices. So, and everyone's voices matter. So I encourage everyone to please like, um, it can be a little bit scary to get out of your comfort zone, but the community, once you do, and once you connect with like people on this panel, people in the Slack channels and everyone, you will realize how amazing this community is and how far you can actually go um, by connecting with one another. And, that's it. and just remember that the loudest voice is not always the most knowledgeable or the wisest voice. So make sure that you uh, just keep that in the back of your mind as you navigate this journey. One other thing before you run and, and do your thing, Jason. Failure is your friend, right? You, you, is, you know how many times I've deleted stuff and I'm like, oh, I hope I backed that up. <laughs> oh, I hope, I hope they didn't need that. <laughs> uh, failure is your friend. And the only reason I say that because you do learn from, from failure. And some people, Again, some people thrive, some people don't. I have thrived in failure um, because I've learned from my mistakes. I learned what not to do and documented what not to do and then document what to do. But now I know the why, right? A lot of people tell you to do something, but you never know the why of why you're doing it. So always learn your why. And again, I agree with everything that everybody said. Collaboration is important. You know, you will find forums, you'll find all kinds of ways to communicate with other people, borrow from their experience, borrow from their failures, borrow from their successes, and meld all of that together in whatever you're doing. And you will fall down a couple of times, you'll have mistakes, there'll be things you don't catch. But you will find there, you'll find improvements all the time, constant. Great. Uh, we're up on time, but we will, uh, well, we've got about three minutes. So uh, real fast, lightning round here, uh, 30 seconds, Dominique, Tamika, Christina, Jason, one thing you want people to take away from this panel discussion. Go. Uh, my one thing I would like people to take away, not just from this panel, but from this entire conference is that every single person that you see up here that you interact with on Slack, please connect with them so you can build your network and your community, starting with it. This is your first conference. Is this is your first time speaking out. This is your first time, you know, attending, seeing these people. Please, please, please reach out and connect with everyone. That's my one thing I would like people to do from this. Um, learn how you learn. Um, don't be afraid of failure. Document, document everything, even, even if you went to the grocery store. <laughs> Uh, and also be the solution. Ooh, 30 seconds. Uh, okay, this is hard. Um, everything everybody else said, but on top of that, I would say do not underestimate the power of cultivating relationships, whether it's with organizations like SANS, with folks that you meet at, you know, at this conference. Relationships are key. Relationships matter, right? Um, and then secondly, like to Tamika's point earlier, understand your why, right? If you're interested in this, if you like the money, whatever your why is, uh, make sure that you're committed to that 
because there will be times where you will have to make a choice, right? So um, learn all you can, but always remember to go back to your why and be intentional about your goals. My, my, my advice would be do your engineering up front, do all of your hard thinking, try and diagram document and build it out, break it apart, whiteboard it, tear it up on a scratch pad, whatever you got to do before you build anything, like really sit down and think of all of the various scenarios that you can come up with and go wild when you do that. And, you know, if you're going to sit there and build and you don't really have a good thought as to where you were trying to go, you're going to end up rebuilding and redoing and it'll be nightmarish. Okay. You need and technical debt. Why not? We all need a little bit of technical debt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're, we're out of time uh, and maybe they'll invite us back to do another one of these. That'd be awesome. So I'd like to say a special thank you to Jennifer Santiago, Dennis Gandrett, Frank Kim, uh, also, as well, our panelists, Dominique West, Christina Murillo, uh, Tamika Reed, and Jason LeBlanc. I'm Emmett Childress, everyone. Thank you. We'll be hanging out in the hallway. See you there.